September 9, 1982. A single-engine Cessna, piloted by Joel Ziegelheim, flew a search pattern over the Rocky Mountains in northern British Columbia, Canada. He and his two passengers were searching for an aircraft that had vanished more than seven weeks before. Suddenly, Ziegelheim's plane, unable to lift above the unexpectedly steep rising valley floor of a canyon, crashed into the trees. What happened next would make history and launch search and rescue into the space age. They'd gone out and done an initial search without any luck, and Ziegelheim was reported overdue. So I was called in to see if we could use the satellite system to help. So I came in and got it set up to track satellite passes in the western fringes, which it was. We only had the one tracking station operating at that time in Ottawa. So to pick up something in British Columbia was sort of at the extreme limits of the system. So I came in, checked the satellite schedule, and made sure everything was working, the communications and so on. And of course, so when the pass occurred in the middle of the night, the data was automatically forwarded to RCC Victoria and they reacted to it, I believe it was the next morning. At 2 a.m. Pacific time, Russia's Kospass-1 satellite picked up a 121.5 megahertz distress signal in the Rocky Mountains. You can see the load to the Latin long they give us, and we're approximately about 10 miles away from the crash site, and uh, we picked up the DLT, and then uh, we circled around, and that's uh, I spotted the tent and the casualties, and that's when we jumped in. We landed right by, the, right by where the, uh, the survivors were, and uh, it was a matter of feet. We were right on, uh, right on target, both of us. Well, I think we had uh, yeah, fractures of the, the, the lower limbs, uh, broken ribs, facial lacerations, and shock. So they were in bad shape. The single-engine plane had crashed 80 kilometers, 50 miles, off its intended flight path, and well out of what would have been the prime search area. If it wasn't for the COSPAS satellite, it would have took us uh, maybe anywhere from three to four days, maybe a week to find the survivors. And uh, if we had to wait that long, the type of injuries they did have, there probably would have been some, uh, there probably would have been some deaths. You know, they, they wouldn't have made it. Finding Ziegelheim and his passengers dramatically proved the effectiveness of satellite technology for search and rescue. By the time the formal intergovernmental cospass sarsat agreement was signed in Paris on July 1st, 1988, the system had already been the primary emergency alerting system in over 450 cases, with 1,000 people saved. This agreement ensured that the space segment would be available long-term for alert and location services. Ships can no longer sink. With, with no alert going out. Vessels with a 406 megahertz beacon uh, with a hydrostatic release can at least have an automatic distress alert transmitted 